Hey guys, welcome to this very special edition of the TFL Car Podcast, and that's because we recorded this from the road. Recently, Nathan and I drove cross country, coast to coast, 2,500 miles nonstop in a cannonball run to establish a new record for driving an electric vehicle across country. We were in an Ionic 5, a Hyundai, and because Nathan is still well, road tripping on the way back to California, we went from Cali to Florida, we thought we should record this week's episode during the road trip. So coming up, you're going to hear the top 10 cheapest cars you can buy in America as me and Nathan are road tripping across America. Now, right here, I'm holding a phone uh, because when we did this podcast, we didn't have the time that we set for the EV Coast to Coast Cannonball. And I'm going to show it to you guys who are watching this on YouTube. No, I'm not. You know what? After we finish the podcast, we'll come back to the studio and I will show you how long it took Nathan and myself to drive nonstop while we had to charge from coast to coast. Hey guys, welcome to this very special on the road podcast because uh, Nathan, myself, and our videographer Cole, who's in the back seat, are trying to set a record to road trip across America, basically from coast to coast. We're going from well, the two parks that you may know, one that is uh, in uh, Orange County, California, to the one that is in Orange County, Orlando. Yeah, and if you're confused, he means Anaheim, and yeah, so it, mouse ears, the whole nine yards. But the, the mouse ear people didn't want to be part of it. Yeah, whatever. So, so we had to switch it up. So mm -hmm. we're going from orange to orange, and right now we're um, doing this um, cannonball where we're going to try to set a record to go between the two oranges, um, downtown Orange County in California to downtown Orlando, which is also in Orange County. Uh, and we're going to be trying to set a record that you guys can break that's more, let's call it EV and family friendly, right? So we're, we're not doing this uh, in a very um, outlaw sort of way. Yeah, we're not trying <laughs> to be Vin Diesel and live our lives a quarter mile at a time. What we're trying to do is efficiently get across the country because if we go too fast, we're going to burn too much power. Exactly. And if we go too slow, we're not going to make it in less than 48 hours, which is what we're aiming for. So we thought we'd do a podcast from the road. And of course, the topic of this podcast, Nathan, are the top 10 least expensive cars you can buy in America. Uh, because let's face it, new car prices have gotten out of control. They're absurd. Yeah, you're not joking. I think 48000 now is the average new car price. Yeah, but it doesn't necessarily have to be the price that you pay. And... We have many examples of that. Not only that, but we also have an example in the vehicle itself of somebody who paid way under that for a new car without using my status. Right, that's you. That's me. We'll right, get to we, that later. Yeah, but before we get to that, uh, let's talk about uh, kind of why we wanted to cross country in the Navy cannonball it from you know one side of the country to the other, uh, and that is because we're living you know in this interesting time where we're switching from gasoline, fossil fuels to electrification, at least, you know, you didn't live, <laughs> joking, Well, we went from horse and buggy to Model T. Yeah, yeah, and I know that was a time that you really enjoyed when you were a kid kicking the can <laughs> down the street, but um, <laughs> the, the, the thing is, is that the, the, there's huge changes, and we're not going to get into the, everything that's behind it, the social, the political, blah, 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 no, blah, blah. We, we do cars we're, and we, trucks. We do cars and trucks. So, what we're going to talk about uh, when we talk about this particular vehicle is the fact that we're doing this, and it's something unique. And recently, for those of you who are paying attention, we did do a very interesting road trip with an electric pickup truck going up to Prudhoe Bay, Alaska. Yeah, we were the first to drive an electric pickup truck as far north in America as you can. Not North America, in the United States, which is Dead Horse Prudhoe Bay. Uh, and that was rather challenging because there was no fast charging. So we thought, let's do something where it's a little bit uh, easier, but you know what? If it was too easy, it would be no fun. So we're cannonballing this, which means we're only stopping the charge. Right. Uh, and of course, you know, use the various uh, gas stations slash Walmarts along the route. Yeah, I got myself a hot dog recently. Yay. <laughs> and we uh, partnered with Electrify America to help, uh, well, promote their charging network. And of course, we partnered with Hyundai and they give us this Ionic 5. Uh, and we chose this car actually on purpose because it's a great road trip car because it's got a couple huge benefits. So right now I'm averaging at this 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour. Yeah, and that's after we just took on some really big hills. Yeah, and that's a great number because that basically 
talks to how efficient it is, right? So in internal combustion engine cars, it's how many miles per gallon you can go. With right. this, it's how many miles per kilowatt hour you can go. It's not that different. It's just, you know, electricity versus gasoline. Well, you have to shift your, your thought process on how that all works, but it's a pretty easy way to convert. Anyway, uh, the point is, is that this car is super efficient. It's got a lot of room. Even though it's not that big of a car, it's got tons of space inside, so we're able to put all our gear in here, all three of us, our luggage, and also these little containers that we're dropping off along the way. We started with like 16 of them, and they have t-shirts in them, like what I'm wearing, and they have a bottle and some other stuff in there, swag. Water bottle, yeah, swag. We're, we want to take you guys with us, so we always like to uh, you know, just hide some stuff along the way that you guys can grab right. and be part of the TFL experience. TFL Nation. Oh uh, no, no, we're not going to. We're not calling it that. We're not going to do that. <laughs> I hate that. I, what do you think about all those like like car dealerships that call themselves Honda Nation? Like whatever it was like ten years ago. Now it just seems so like silly and stupid and well, like out of date. Well, calling a group of people a nation is something that is a little presumptuous in some cases. I think. So I wouldn't personally do that, but you know, it's to each their own. So the other great thing about the Sionic for this road trip is it charges really quick. It's one of the few cars that has an 800 volt architecture, which means right. it can charge up to 250 kilowatts, uh, which, you know, imagine um, the trick here is you're gonna spend more time charging than you are going fast, because the faster you go, the more power you use exponentially. So the trick is to just kind of find that balance point between how fast you go uh, and how long you charge. Right. And then that charging length depends on how quickly it can suck up electrons, and this thing can do it really quick. Yeah, in, in terms of zero to 60, well, you know that almost all electric cars are super quick, but really when it comes to charging speed, that's where the new fight is. So in this case, this car charges really quick. We only, so far since we started this trip, have only stopped one time that took more than 20 minutes. Yes. And for the most part, we've been doing really well with being able to kind of dash and throw in up to 80% and take off. Yeah, we should talk about that. That's another thing sometimes people don't quite get. Yeah. On a road trip, you never charge a car over 80% because that last 20% can take you four times as long as that first 80%, right? Right. Uh, because uh, there's this thing called a charging curve. So, like, the longer um, you charge into the battery, the slower... Uh, the, the nozzle or the smaller the nozzle gets that you know is allowing the electrons to flow. It'd be like going to a gas station and you know the last twenty percent of the fuel tank you'd be filling it up with like an eyedropper, right? So you yeah. don't never go above eighty percent. But there's another thing about that too and that is preserving the battery's integrity over a long period of time. If you can maintain a battery and not constantly cram it full of power they can last a little bit longer. And this comes from the people who actually build these things. I know a lot of you guys are like, oh, no, it doesn't. You can charge it 100%, 90% of the time. I'm just telling you what they told me. And it makes sense. You're not overcooking the battery. It is about heat and how the heat is transferred to. Yeah, so we want to do this podcast uh, while we're still fresh. We're 259 miles into the trip. It's going to be 2,500 miles, so we've gone 10%. 10%. It's to, yeah, it's going to take us 48 hours, so it's going to be, you know, two days and two nights. Uh, and Finally, the other reason we chose this car, like I said, I think there are only two other vehicles that charge as quick or quicker than this, and that's the Porsche Taycan yeah. and the Hummer EV. Yeah, well, yeah. The Hummer would have been fun, but that would burn not so be much a, power. Oh, uh, would require a lot of energy so, to get it across so, the country. So when I drove that Lightning up to Alaska, yeah. we were getting like maybe 1.6 uh, miles per like half of this. Yeah. So that once again means you know you're half as efficient, so you got to spend twice as much time charging. You get it. Yep. Yep. Uh, and the other great thing about this car is it's got really good, um, what's called ADAS, right? Um, which is basically all the safety gear. So right now I've got lane centering on. Yeah, lane I've, keep assist. Yep, I've got uh, proximity control on, yep. so it's keeping me at 75 miles an hour. Which, by the way, like if we went from 75 to 85 or 95, we can go faster, but exponentially we'd use more power, so we'd spend more time staying Even right now, frankly, I would rather be going slower, but the speed limit is 75, and we don't want to be one of those guys who's you know, going too slow. So we're keeping it at the speed limit in this case, but its sweet spot seems to be between 60 and 65 miles per hour, I think, is really where it's happiest. And we, at one point, were up to, what, 3.3, 3.4? kilowatt hour. Yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. It was, was doing really good. But, but keep in mind also, we're, I think we're going uphill, right? We're starting at the coast and we're mm -hmm. kind of going in it. So the way we're doing this trip is we're, we're in the southern route, so we're on I-10 right now. 
So we'll be on here for a while. Done in California, went to Arizona, then we kind of kissed New Mexico, going to Texas. That's going to be a long one. Yeah, 800 miles plus. Then Louisiana, and then it's either Alabama or Mississippi, Mississippi, Alabama, and then we get to Florida, the Panhandle, and hey, we're there. No, we're not. We got to go all the way down to Orlando. Yeah, yeah, we're going to Orlando. All right. So, yeah. So, so let's do let's do this before we get too you know if we do this uh, 48 hours from now it'd be a much different podcast. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Well, we're one. doing it during daylight hours, and we have a nice long stretch here where it's pretty much a straight run. So. Even Roman might manage to avoid these huge trucks who, by the way, like to pass right when they're going uphill, I noticed. I That's noticed their that favorite too. time to pass. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about that list that Zach put together for us. Like I said, the average new car price is now well over $45,000, which right. to me is But we're insane. talking about the least expensive cars yes. that you can buy. So we're talking about cars that are way under uh, that number. Uh, and let's face it, with COVID and supply chain issues, cars have gotten obscene, both new and used cars. So we thought, hey, if you guys are out there and you need a new car and you don't want to go the used car route, because in some cases used cars can be more expensive than new cars still. I know it's ridiculous. Why don't you Why don't you uh, start us off on that list and see what, what what Zach has given us as background? So we're going to go from ten to one. Ten being the most expensive of the ten least expensive, and then one being the very least expensive. What are all those notes? What are you saying? Yep, I'm going to get there in a minute. So. Um, now, bear in mind that dealer inventory seems to be rebounding, but there may be some weirdness depending on the car and also depending on the, what the dealer says about MSRP, as you guys know about dealer markups and whatnot. There are also other things out there that you should keep in mind, including dealers adding extra fees that you may not know about, like some warranty fees and whatever. Keep that in mind. That might happen. It actually almost happened to me. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why don't we talk about your new truck purchase at the end of this podcast? Because, we'll do it at the end. Yeah, because it's interesting because you went through that gauntlet of dealer BS, right? Yeah. Yeah. Quite a bit of it, actually. Um, the actual MSRP for the least expensive and a rough idea of what those prices are, all of that plays out when you guys actually do your due diligence, because remember that one state might be less expensive than another state, and blah, blah, blah. Keep that in mind, guys, okay? So with that in mind... What's number 10? Number 10 is the Toyota Corolla L at $21,520. Now, are we getting less expensive as we go down the list? Yes. Oh, that's great. So there will be cars that are under 20000 Yes. Now, the average dealer pricing ranges from twenty two five to twenty three thousand dollars for the Corolla toy uh, the Toyota Corolla L also sometimes dealerships will do an order where they're bringing in cars that have a few uh, options added to them and that also might be your negotiation point so here's the first problem right with these inexpensive cars they're hard to get because dealers don't order a lot right yep. a dealer makes a lot more on a car that's fifty thousand than they make on a car that's 21000 So they load these cars up because there's a lot more profit in getting all the bells and whistles. Absolutely. And not only that, but they still profit even if, you know, you're like, oh, well, you're really close to MSRP. Yeah, well, only a couple hundred dollars above MSRP. This is great. You know what? Even if they were at MSRP, they're still profiting. You know, just keep that in mind. Holy uh, cow. Yeah, this truck almost ran us over. So yeah. it was a gas truck who apparently is upset that we're driving an electric vehicle. And wow. Yeah, that's why he did that. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, like he couldn't wait a minute while we got past it. He couldn't. Okay, let's move on. All right, well, what do you think of the Corolla L? Let's talk about the Corolla. Yeah. The Toyota Corolla in general, first of all, I believe that is the sedan. The sedans are more expensive than the hatchback versions of the Corolla. And that car is great with one exception. Okay, what's Backseat that? space. Backseat space is terrible. Okay. No bueno. No bueno, huh? No bueno, but uh, trunk space is decent. The car does everything well. I mean, it's a Corolla, and Corollas have a very solid reputation. Basically, a Corolla is just one step away from a Camry, not only in terms of its reputation of being reliable and solid, but also the new Corolla that exists today is almost the same size as the Camry that came out in the mid 80s that yeah. particular model of camry i think it was like the fifth or no fourth generation camry so i mean size wise they're about the same it's kind of crazy yeah i just uh we just did a review uh, i was in, in california with case and honda lent us uh the new civic i was amazed at how big that was my friend fred's family when i grew up bought nothing but accords mm -hmm. right this is now we're talking 80s and 90s right right that civic was bigger than the old station wagon accord in terms of interior room i mean so 
when we say it's a small car, you got to take that with a grain of salt. Now, there are smaller cars on this list, and we'll cover those in a bit. But, um, yeah, I wanted to give this guy the one finger salute, but this is a family show. What's that guy? Oh, no, it was this guy. It right? was this guy, trust me. It's a tanker. Okay. I got to see it real close. Yes, you did. Um, All right, what's number nine? Number nine is a car that I happen to like quite a bit, and I yeah. like the fact that it's on this list, and that's the Kia Soul LX. Now, the price here... $21,085, but the average dealer pricing is between $20,750 and $22,000. So they're selling at MSRP. They're selling them at MSRP, and the good news here is that it's a really decent car. It really is. Look, I'm not in love with continuously variable transmissions. You're going to get one. Uh, you, I don't believe they're doing the turbo this year. I think they discontinued it. But I'm not 100% sure. Are you sure. in love with hamsters? Is that, is that no, a, actually I'm not. A but soft spot in your heart for that? I love a logical car that gives you a lot of utility and a lot of kit for so, the price. So here's the thing about the Soul, right? It kind of came on and became kind of the it car, right? It, you know, it had this clever marketing campaign. The last generation was did something that's very hard to do, and that is it attracted both male and female buyers. You know, young I mean? and old. Young and old. It was it was just hit every demographic, and it quickly became. Uh, their fastest selling most popular car but right? there's a good reason for that so, too so like, like first new drivers bought them because they were safe and they were affordable uh empty nesters bought them because yep. they were safe and they were affordable and they had a lot of room yeah so, so when you're moving you know your your parakeets or your parrots or your dogs you or can, even kids little if you yeah. have a small family new of three. families bought them yeah, yeah. and then, it, then this current generation they they, they, they kind of tweak the styling and I don't like it as much as the old one it, it's a little bit too sci-fi does, does that make sense it made it I, I know too. what you mean I, I don't mind it so much but I really I still like the second generation it's still my favorite of the souls yeah and also the original turbo of that when they brought it out they do have red I think red line or is that it yeah, yeah. yeah I think so yeah and some line. other stuff out there they, they got rid of some of the other trims they've changed a few things around but all in all, you get a lot of stuff for the money with this car, which is huge. And so. it's also kind of like a baby crossover, right? Even though it really isn't. It's, more it's of a not a crossover. And they even had a fake version of it, which looked a little off-roady. It wasn't. It never has been. It's never been all-wheel drive. It's always been front-wheel drive. Right. But And they also have an electric version. We're not referring to that one either. Yeah, I the drove the, not the current generation, the previous one. Previous one, yeah. Yeah, and that one didn't have, it was a California compliance car. Not, yeah. Not Bueno. No Bueno there, Nathan. Yeah, that was, that was good. very basic and simple. Well, obviously, they've moved a long and, way from there. You, but know, you know our friend Alex from... Uh, yeah, Alex car, Dykes. Yeah, New Car Buyer's Guide. He's, he's rebranding himself. Uh, if you guys don't know who he is, he's one of the YouTubers that we see a lot on these new car uh, programs. Um, he had one as a as a long term car for a while, mm -hmm. uh, and he was very happy with it. He was, you know, he was very complimentary of the thing. Yeah, electric and, one. Yeah, the electric one. Yeah, yeah. He he had it in Northern California too. Yeah. The next one on our list. Number eight. Number eight. And I, I preface this with, keep in mind that Hyundai and Kia are going to be dominant on this list. It's not because we want them to be there. It's because they price cars to be here. That would be the Kia Forte LX. And that comes in at $20,585. Average dealer pricing ranges between $20,585 to $21,880. Once again, it seems like they're selling at MSRP. Right. Uh, I like I, the Forte. It's a little, uh, you know, it's a little... Uh, it's a little uh, fun intro car, you know, first car, it's good for that, you know, it's like if you are uh, got a high school driver or you've got a kid that's going to college, that's a really great car for them, so they won't have any issues with it. I think it's a great commuter car. Yeah. Uh, I have a friend who does not like large vehicles. He wanted a new car with just a warranty he wanted to be done with. He doesn't like driving, doesn't like cars. I went, on the, I went he, on the program of it, uh -huh. and they kind of made, the, I remember... It was raining. I hate when it rains because it was like... It's hard to film. It was pouring down rain. And even in the rain, it had a little bit of like pizzazz. Mm -hmm. But it is a little anonymous. You know what I mean? If you, if, if, you, if you like drive through the Target parking lot, there'll be a lot of them there and you won't notice them. Yeah, I would agree with you. There's, and they're a very popular rental car. The, I, I, I personally think that the Soul's a little bit more logical. He didn't like it, but he liked this, the standard sedan Forte and he was thrilled with it. And I believe he got his last year for about 20. Have you noticed one thing about this list so far? They're all cars with real names. I like that. <laughs> right? B796-42. Yeah. TRS-42. 
15, whatever that means, turbo. <laughs> yeah, yeah not, not a whole lot of uh, turbos on this list. So the next one on this list is the least expensive all-wheel drive vehicle you can buy in the United States. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. I'm already interested. And Lay it that, on me, my man. That is the Subaru Impreza base sedan coming in at $20,815. Now, as you know, we don't get Subarus to review because they don't like working with us. So I have nothing intelligent or stupid to say about it because I don't think I've driven one. The only thing I know is if I was going to get an all-wheel drive Impreza, I'd get the um, Crosstrek because it's absolutely because it's you know it's it's a couple thousand dollars more, maybe like three k more. No, it's not that much more. Is it? No, it's and, not. And, you know, you get that nine inches of ground clearance. And yes. You're cladding, and it's just if you're going to go there, get the one you know that looks cooler. Well, if you need all-wheel drive, you need a little bit of ground clearance, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Uh, if, if you're in snow country or if you're in a place that has you know real dirt roads you have to traverse, the Crosstrek is a brilliant little car. So, we we owned one. Yeah, we bought it like three years ago now, two yeah, years ago. Three. Twenty-three thousand dollars before it was right before like all the prices went sky high. Yep. And uh, you know we uh, reviewed it and then we gave it, sold it actually. Good. TFL sold it uh, to our videographer Ian, and he's now put on thirty thousand trouble-free miles, Nathan. Well, the thing is, I'm an iron little horse. My complaint has always been, and probably will maintain as long as they keep doing it. The CBT takes away from fun, takes away from performance provides a very efficient car though these are really efficient for all-wheel drive vehicles and once again at the prices and uh, this one by the way average dealer pricing is between twenty thousand eight hundred and fifteen dollars all the way up to twenty two thousand dollars six hundred and fifteen dollars yeah the biggest problem with the Crosstrek is it can quickly get very expensive right because the dealers yes they, they uh, order those sports right and yep. I remember seeing when we had one we borrowed from a dealer, I think it was, even before COVID, it was $36,000. Yeah, you can get crazy amounts of, uh, you know, add-ons, larger, more powerful powertrain. Uh, but we're still talking about the Impreza. And the Impreza is essentially what the Crosstrek is, but it's not lifted with all the good stuff. And this one's also the sedan, keep that in mind. Um, Once again, get the Crosstrek. Just, just stretch. Uh, and we're saying that, but today... When we're recording this, uh, the Fed just announced that they did another rate hike, and that's going to have to affect, uh, you know, availability of new vehicles. It'll make, I think, new vehicles more affordable because what's going to happen is people are not going to have the financing ability to buy new vehicles. So at, at some point, uh, I think dealers are going to have to start cutting prices, and supply is going to hopefully uh, not just meet uh, demand, but exceed demand, Nathan. Yeah. I... Wouldn't that be grand? <laughs> well, you know, back to those days with those, like, guys with their arms in the yeah, air. Yeah, come and get our cars. We have too many. We, we, have, we too, have to. We'll give one away. The holding cost is way too much for us. Yeah. Hey, it, here's a question for you. Yes. All right. Uh, this is what uh, one of our, my guys was telling me he thinks is going to happen. Because the dealers have had it so good for so long, I'm saying, you know, they've been making money hand over fist for the last two years, right? Everything yeah. they get, they sell, and everything... Most of everything they get, they sell it way over MSRP. In many cases, yes. Right, and now with, I think, you know, potentially an economic downturn coming in with the manufacturers finally, you know, meeting supply and hopefully exceeding it, I think manufacturers are going to start uh, uh, stuffing the supply chain, basically going to dealers saying, hey, we've got 50 trucks, take it or leave it. And if the dealers say leave it, then they'll be like, the next allocation, you're going to get 10. So, yep. Oh, I, I, I would agree with you there. And, so the manufacturers don't care if we buy them. They only care if the dealer buys them. I mean, eventually they care, but you know, uh, yeah, initially, you know uh, what I mean? Yeah, I see what you're saying, but I also don't fully agree. I think that the manufacturers are caring more and more, especially with the advent of social media being so responsive to issues, and they don't like bad press. And some automakers are getting rid of some of their dealerships altogether. That so, being Ford so, is one of them. So are you saying here's 50 cars and trucks, take it, or, you know, hit the road jack? I would say that would be uh, one way of doing it. And then also in future, in the future, when dealerships are looking like, hey, you're on the verge of going out, automakers are going to say, yep, we're going to take the same model, cross it between what Ford's about to do and what Tesla's doing, and basically get rid of the middleman. And I'm completely fine with that. I think dealers have been absolutely unconscionable about how they've been treating people. I just saw Roadrunner. It was so cool. Did you really? Yeah, he didn't run across the road. He ran next to the road. Yeah, one of the schools I went to was Metro State yeah. in Colorado. And the, uh, the, the Red Runners. Yeah. Oh, cool. Mighty Roadrunners. Yeah, that's a cool bird. It's a great school. All right, okay. What's next? 
So the next one on our list um, is one that you are very familiar with, and I'll give you a hint. All right. Your mom owns one. Oh, the venue. Yep. <laughs> yeah, the, the Hyundai venue. What a great little car. Yeah, so the pricing here is uh, $20,295. Um, now, Zach's notes here say, one of the exceedingly few crossovers you can get for around this price. I don't think it's a crossover. I know it kind of looks like one. It's a teeny tiny crossover. It's a hatchback. It, it's all. It's not all-wheel drive. It's front-wheel drive, and there's no option for all-wheel drive. So, so we bought, my mom is in her 70s. Well, she won't tell me, but definitely her 70s. Well, she's got to be, considering. And my stepdad's in his 90s, and we bought it because it's easy to drive, right? It's got not a lot of overhang and you can see everything around you and it's got the full that's a great thing Japanese and the Koreans are doing right they're stuffing their cars full of the latest safety stuff oh yeah right so you've got autonomous braking you've got lane departure warning stuff that like you don't even get on a fifty thousand or seventy thousand dollar truck you get on a twenty thousand dollar yeah it's venue. all standard they just cram yeah. it in there I actually agree about the, the height of it the sight lines and yeah, also the easy, fact that they're easy to get out of. old people can put their butt on the seat really easily without falling into a car climbing into the car and it doesn't because it's you know a relatively affordable car it's not stuff full of technology so like it doesn't have navigation so if you plug it in you can use you use Apple your phone yeah, exactly. yeah 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 and uh but but it does have a lot of the safety tech is, exactly. is what we're referring and, to and, so and it's fuel efficient yes it's frugal it's extremely frugal you get you do get a four-cylinder engine you get a continuously variable transmission there's no option for anything else in that respect in terms of powertrain now the average dealer pricing is ranging between twenty thousand four forty uh, to twenty one thousand three twenty. Um, it's I I've love seen that. On the right. Yeah, I love it when, especially when they can clearly see that another truck is trying to pass. Uh, it's I know, yeah, it's I know. typical. I yeah. I, you remember that I was, when I was growing up, there were all these like you were probably not too far behind me. Not right? that far. Yeah. Like, look at this mess this guy's doing. He's trying to pass on the left, and now these other trucks. All the, are, it's, and they, it jams up everybody else and enforces yeah, passenger when, cars. Yeah, like, remember Hey, if you got stuck, call a trucker. They'll help you out. Yeah. They, they, these guys are more likely to run you off the road. Or, or take a sledgehammer to And your I'm head. sure if you're a trucker, you're like, hey, just knock it off. We've seen plenty of it, you know, stupidity from car drivers, but passing on the right when a truck is trying to pass. Well, on the especially left. bullying and everything else, especially when everybody else is going the speed limit or even over the speed limit. You got some guy who's. You know, cranking and just wants to get by everybody else. So and, look, had, and look at all this. Yeah, we had a truck in our left lane going 67, and there were two trucks who passed him on the right going 75. And finally, this guy was, it's a road train, he's got two um, uh, trailers, right? Yeah. Finally, was able to move over. Yeah, it's, we, we know we have to be patient with these guys, but I gotta be honest with you. Um, they keep this up. Automation doesn't sound like a bad replacement in some cases. <laughs> so you're saying beware, guys. <laughs> well, they, they damn well know it. I mean, Mr. they're Musk screaming is about it. For your job. Oh, they're more than just Musk. With but yeah, full self trucking. Now, while we're on Hyundai, once again, as I told you guys, they dominate this list. Hyundai and Kia. The next one on the list, number five. It's a BMW on my butt. Hold on, I just want to get past this truck. Okay. Uh, sorry. I know you guys are probably about to comment if you're watching this on video. Hey, don't you see the BMW? I yeah, see we it. do, but we're I also passing a truck okay, right now. Yeah, so just, you don't see up what's up front, so just give me a break. I'm not going to give him a break. I'm riding with him. I get to make fun of him all I want. <laughs> okay, so this Hyundai Accent, I'm actually kind of surprised to still build the Hyundai Accent yeah, because I, of the I, venue. I, what a blast right? from the past. Yeah, the Accent is is really, it's in a very, it's an anonymous vehicle. It's, um, not that popular, I would say. It never really enjoyed the popularity I think it deserved. It was a decent car, always. Um, Hyundai Accent SC, right now, now bear in mind, this is probably going away. That's why I'm mentioning this. $17,740. Average dealer price in range is between seventeen five dollars and $20,500. So they are bumping them a bit. Uh, Hyundai is dropping the Accent after this particular model year and yeah the venue then will be officially their least yeah, expensive let's, car let's talk about and it makes sense let's talk about the various ways that dealers have to uh skin the Ugh. cat right yeah you know obviously the most uh, agreed just that i think people would certainly see as being well over the top is when they take like a z and they put a 50 or a 70 or even you know double the price of it and just put adjusted market Market adjustment, right? Market adjustments are the easiest way. But there's other tricks that they have up their sleeves. Ugh. Like, I remember we tried to buy that little uh, electric mini, and yeah. we found one uh, here in California. 
uh, actually just one state over. Yeah. Uh, and the guy's like, uh, it's got low jack. And I'm like, how much is low jack? He's like, 500 bucks. I'm like, low jack. I don't I remember that, but people still do that because low jack is like a little, uh, it's like an air tag, right? Yeah, it, that's exactly <laughs> what it is. Twenty five dollar tag they hide in your vehicle that then hopefully if it gets stolen, I'm like, but the vehicle tells me where it is on my app. Yeah. Right. It it, it knows where it's at. So why do I need low jack? To tell me where it's at, what in the BMW slash Mini app it tells me its exact location. So it's just yeah. it's just uh, you know they just put an air tag in there and charge you five hundred bucks for it. Yeah, I mean there might be a little bit more to it, but the point is is I'm that not sure there's some. There's but that, some that, that's an example of oh, something. You notify that, the police and there's yeah. a database. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, if you call the police and notice your car is gone, then do a report and they know where it is because you have a tag in it, then everything's great. So. Here's a consumer advice. Instead of getting low jack, you're just going to air tag keep it in your car but, at all but time. They're, but they're not doing it because they, they no. care about the safety of your family. They, they're doing it just to jack up the price. So, when, of course, my dad was buying cars, rust proofing. We, uh, yeah, uh, a yep, thousand back bucks in the worth day. of undercoating was huge. Winder tone. You want to get some special toner on pinstriping. your car. Pinstriping. Oh, pinstripe. Extra pinstripe. Or you want tinting on that back window? We'll hook you up. That was back in the day, and that's definitely gone on to another level. Yeah, how about like uh, all the accessories that you don't need? Oh, it already has mats. No, we got to give you these special mats. <laughs> yeah, um, should I mention my, my situation? Or wait until we're done. Uh, with, let's with wait what until I we're done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, the, but but yes, indeed, there's a lot of that going on, and we'll 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 circle back to that. And, and then, of course, extended warranties. We're not even going to get which, in, once in, again. I'll, I'll mention that too. Because the, uh, the the fine print there is, you know, very important. There are some that may be useful, but most of them are just, especially if you're a new car, you know, unless you're one of those people who keeps their car for 20 years, right, the chances are it's going to be covered under the manufacturer warranty. Yeah, I, I personally have dealings with that as well, and, and used car warranties. So there's an awful lot that you can do by just a little bit of due diligence based on what you're looking at and also the warranty company. Once again, we'll circle back to that a little bit, and we'll touch on that topic again. Uh, so let's get to the next one on the list. Big surprise, another Hyundai product, but this is from Kia, and it's the Kia Rio yeah. LX. Remember that? Yeah, it's a little tiny thing. Yeah, the Kia Rio was, was yeah, well, that was always their entry-level car for years and years and years. And it sounds fun, doesn't it, Rio? Yeah, you kind of Carnival. jazz it out a little <laughs> bit. Ooh, fun. Yeah, you got a Rio and a Carnival, and you can have yourself a party. Rio Carnival. The carnivals and minivan for those yeah, you, of you don't you know. You think of like people, half naked people partying in the streets. That's what I think of when I think if of If they're half naked <laughs> hanging out near a Rio, I don't really want to know them. <laughs> okay, $17,645. So that's not too bad, uh, but the average dealer pricing is between $17,645 and $19,495. I saw one last year. Once again, I was helping my friend when he was looking at a different Kia. And it was twenty-five thousand dollars, and I could not figure out why it was so damn expensive. You know why it was expensive? Low jack, clear bra. Okay, clear bra. And they undercoating. No. Extended no. warranty. And you're, you're getting close. You're, you're getting really close. Really close with the pinstriping. Uh, uh, ceramic coating. Custom paint. Custom paint. A wrap. Yeah. Was it a wrap? It was a wrap. Okay. It was, uh, they, it, yeah. The dealer wrapped it? The dealer wrapped it. Oh. And then they oh. jagged they added on like another $4,000 oh. or something. Here's another thing the dealers do for trucks. Uh, I like when they have like those like built out trucks that they, you know, they, 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 uh, they they're special in, builds. Yeah, they park in front of the dealership. And, you know, some of them are cool, but a lot of them are just like, you look at it and you're like, yeah, that's a high country lift. Uh, that's about 50 bucks per. <laughs> yeah, and, and there's, corner. There's, there's a ten thousand dollar bill. This is. <laughs> exactly. And I'll like, give it to you for eight thousand dollars. Yeah, way. yeah, yeah. Those aren't king shocks under there. No. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's, it, it can get pretty bad. Um, so let's talk about that uh, Kia Rio. Kia Rio is very similar in terms of like the the Hyundai Accent. Is their entry level vehicle? Right now, Kia Rio is still going strong. As far as I know, they're not discontinuing it at least for this upcoming year. So it's still there. They used to have a little wagon version of that. A little, it was a hatchback. Yeah, I remember. But that it was, was a, like a wagon. That was a long time ago. Yeah, that was a really. What it was like that. It was kind of cool. It was yeah, you, you, that was one you'd notice in the uh, Walmart slash Target parking lot. Oh come on! I mean, you know, it was a good college car too. So it was, the setup was pretty good. Now the next one on the list. We're getting cheaper here. <laughs> we're getting super cheap. We're yeah. we're down to the last three. So this is number three. Dun, dun, dun. Now this is the one I would have chosen for least expensive. 
but um, our buddy Zach here put it up. Oh, I can see why now. Because some of the cars that are on this list from this point forward will be discontinued. The Diamante? No, the Diamante has been gone for years. Come on. Oh, but no, you're close, the, the right? Mirage. The, yeah. The, the Mitsubishi Mirage, Mirage yeah. ES yeah. is at seventeen six. Uh, the hatchback is one thousand dollars cheaper than the G4 sedan, which strikes me as odd because I, the, at least the hatchback looks sort of okay. It rolls down thirteens if I'm not something mistaken. tiny. Uh, but but that the, the the sedan looks really funky to me. It almost looks like a Toyota Echo. All right, now here is where we're getting into cars that I don't know if I could wholeheartedly recommend because I would. A, a lot of these cars, while they're fine. Uh, appliances, they're not safe appliances, right? Now you're no, 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 you can't say that. Wait, no, I can't. Uh, no, they're I'll, totally safe. They're, they're, the safety rating on it's decent, oh, and then the on, next I'll, two are pretty good. I'll, I'll tell you why. Uh, it's because of size, right? If you get that, that, that truck that the dealer's selling with the high country lift, yeah, that rams, if you're rolling on 13s and, and that truck runs into you, it's going to run you over. I'm not talking about the safety rating of the car, I'm just talking about the physics of the situation, right? Right, you live in a place like Colorado or even here in Arizona, and there are these monster lifted trucks. And I, I'm starting to get to the point where I feel very unsafe being in something small and compact, and especially something small and subcompact. Okay, I can understand your point, but guess what? Everything what? you just said is completely rubbish. I disagree with you because any car that you're in next to another giant truck that's hit with something that has a 13 inch lift is going to suffer significantly. In fact, if you're in a Jeep Wrangler, or if you're in, oh, I don't know, a Toyota Corolla. I don't know. It's, Your it's, head height is part of the deal well, and where the crush zones are on the car. Well, not I feel like in that Escalade over there and going on the other way. So uh, these people can afford an Escalade, a brand new Escalade? No, you? no, but, but at, at, at this point, I might actually start thinking about a used vehicle. No, I, I disagree. All because right, fair there's, enough. Well, just, because there's people in certain businesses that can't do that for various so, reasons so, financially. So you know uh, that we just bought a Fiat 500 Okay, now come on, that, that's a different story. That, Cinquecento, the, yes. 1971. Like, like, I can put it on my lap and, and cradle it. We put it, we actually using this office furniture. It fits <laughs> in our office. It does. Uh, uh, but that's an example of a car that, uh, you know, I feel like you want to drive that on the weekend to get some ice cream on a very beautiful day and nowhere near any highways or traffic. Yes, okay. With something like that, or some sort of old MG or whatever, going cross country could be a little scary. And, and then the other thing about the Mirage is it's been around a long time, so I don't think it's got the latest and greatest safety tech. It actually has quite a few standard features. Does it? Not have, only that, but does it, it also have autonomous braking. I wonder. It has a version that is similar, and also it has lane departure warning and a whole bunch of other stuff. So how many airbags? Come on, like I know that off the top of my head. I know, I know. I don't know. We have to Google it. But anyway. Uh, but I can tell you that it has plenty, and it, and it passes safety. It doesn't have the best scores, but it also doesn't have the worst. It's actually a relatively safe car. I researched that, put a whole article on TFLcar.com about it, and how it deserves a little bit more respect. This guy's moving. Yeah. Oh, he's, and, uh, don't, uh, just screw him. I just don't want to have him run into me. Oh, it's actually a Toyota um, Class C motorhome. Uh, dolphins. Yeah, those are actually kind of cool, but they're slow. Okay. So the Mirage, we're not going to go into this whole thing because I know you have a certain bias against it, but let's talk about a car that's actually bigger. Okay. And yet oh, yeah, less expensive. Let me not be clear. I like, I think Mitsubishi's building some actually interesting cars again, yeah. but the Mirage is not one of them. Well, no, but it was. it's built to have an entry-level vehicle for people who actually need a car with a decent would, warranty. All right. Very, very, very good engineering if you're thinking about economy. It is the most economical car that's not a hybrid. All right, let, let me just be as plain spoken as I can. There are basically uh, two cars that I would keep away from. That's one of them. What are the other two? Okay. And, so, what, what do you think are the other two? There's two other cars that well, I would, Oh, well, what are the other two cars yeah. you use? Well, well, Tesla. No, 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 no. But, <laughs> you know, what other two cars? Come on. One's a Ford. You can guess it. We yeah. actually reviewed it. Oh, yeah. So the, the Ford F-150 Lightning. No, no, no. Not the Ford F-150 Lightning. Come on. Uh, the, the, well, Built in India. Not that that makes it bad. Well, it initially it was. Yeah. The Ford um, EcoSport, which I, is uh, they call EcoSport. Or right, maybe exactly. it's the other way around. Yeah. We had yeah. that in the office, and it, let's face it, it, it didn't exactly like it's, it's, wow with its. There's uh, nothing really wrong with it, but there's nothing really right with it. I'm sorry, it's just it's just a very simple vehicle. All-wheel drive system works fine. Actually, one thing I do like about it, it was one of the easiest vehicles ever to park, ever. The the way it's shaped and how snubby it is, a very short overhangs front and rear, 
parking that thing is one. Of, seriously, it's one of the easiest cars I've ever parked. Yeah, I'm just. I would just say inexpensive cars don't have to be cheap. Well, I'd leave it at that. Okay, you could say that, but really, in, if you're a person on a budget, and I get it, a lot of these cars make a lot more sense. Um, okay, the next one on this list, and I'm glad it's here, and I'm surprised it's actually less expensive than the Mirage, is the Nissan Versa S. And I used to hate the Versa because I thought it was the ugliest car on the road. But then they started making it nicer, especially the Versa Note from the last generation. Yeah, the Note was good. The original Versa, when it was the cheapest car you could buy in America, once again, you know, you, you can make it inexpensive, but you don't have to make it cheap. Uh, but that, that, one was, this, that one was not great. There were things but about it that were got, still good. The it, Note got much better. Yeah, well, the regular Versa has always had some of the best backseat volume in, in the industry for its size and good trunk space. Um, not my favorite car, obviously, for very, a lot of reasons, but the new one, and they recently completely redid it, and it's a lot like a baby uh, Sentra now. It really is. It looks like one. It's got a lot more style, a lot more pizzazz. And yeah, Nissan's kind of come out of the doldrums. In, in some ways. Okay, so this one, Nissan Versa S, that's the base model, $16,675. I think that's actually kind of a bargain. Now, this is Zach's notes. One of the few cars you can still get with a five-speed manual. Yeah. And that is awesome. But that's also at the lowest price because some cars actually charge you more to get the manual now. Right. You know? Yeah, there but, are a couple of cars on Mazda is one of them. But you've got to figure that most of the people who are in that category probably don't know how to drive a manual. Some might, but a lot won't. If you know. Yeah, but you'd be surprised how quickly you can learn when you have no choice. Okay, so. <laughs> are you recommending that they buy the car not knowing how to drive a Hell manual yeah. and then they, then they bring it home and then they figure it out along the way god I, help you if you live in san francisco so um and uh, i i lived there for a little bit and i had a manual and i could i made it happen yes I, yes i'm saying if you don't know how what to a great a place to learn too yes yes, yes. That, is, um, that is the baptism of fire here it, it, it works but take it down lumbar street i uh, i'll tell you this yeah. um if dealerships had somebody who actually worked there who taught someone for free how to drive a manual transmission. Wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah, yeah, I think Haggerty does that. Okay, so anyway, um, let's move on. More about the, the Versa, though. Um, so the more common ones, obviously, will be the CVTs, uh, if you're buying from a dealer. Now, average dealer pricing is between 17000 all the way up to 20000 Oh, they're marking those bad boys up. Right. So you got to keep that in mind. Now, Nissan really needs to not do that, but dealerships just don't care uh, in many cases. And it just it's bad for the whole company in terms of just the look, right? Uh, no matter what, they can't really control the dealers. And so when they pull that stuff, it kind of irritates me because the car is not worth that, even though it's a decent car. By the way, the uh, safety suite that Nissan uses on the Versa, a lot of standard features, one of the safest cars in its class and its safety ratings are outstanding that i know i remember that for a very small car all right are we at number one please yes we are number one now bear in mind this is one of the ones i was mentioning before it's going away okay and it is the chevrolet spark oh Shine. spark yeah spark an old daewoo um no yeah, it's it it, it, the platform yes it's another one though that was built for certain countries including india third world countries what have you and that How vehicle comes in at $14,595 if you can find one. They're really hard to find, especially with a manual transmission. They're almost impossible so to was find like, with it that. Was Spark, Sonic, right? In mm, the small the Sonic's gone. Yeah, I know. I actually kind of like the Sonic, especially yeah. the turbo. So the average dealer pricing on this car goes from $14,595 all the way up to $17,785. Uh, one of the ones that I helped someone purchase recently, one of the, well, actually a viewer of ours for a very long time who asked me to help, um, got it for 18000 but it was the, like, the mid-level mm -hmm. with a lot of extra goodies. Not a lot of room. No, it's only built for four. That's the, even though it, you could fit a fifth person in the back seat, they have this little counter there where you can put, like, drinks, yeah, they and it's to keep no people, belts, yeah. right, no belts, and yeah. so when you would compare it to something like uh, the Mitsubishi Mirage, the Mirage does have that seat belt if you need to put three people in the back, so keep that in mind. You can only hold four people in the Spark, um, and I, I really, there's nothing wrong with the Spark. It's not fast, but you do get, you know what's really cool? The infotainment system 
GM was ahead of the game when the Spark initially came out because you could plug your phone in and everything from your phone went right up on this little like six or seven inch screen. Yeah, I remember. And it worked great. I remember we had the EV, right? Yeah, we. Uh, yeah. Um, Forget about that. I, I, yes, I tried to. <laughs> I, I just we, we the, the regular gas one just made a lot more we, sense. We had, we had the 2014, which had like a total of 60 miles of range. Yeah, it did not do great with range. Well, it was really quick. It was. It's quicker yeah. than my daughter's leave. Yes. Woo. Yes. All right. So. Uh, before we get to your experience with your brand new vehicle that you just bought, yeah, uh, that, that actually was delivered while you were on this Cannonball run, which sucks because I'm sure. Yeah, I hear it's home. nice. I hear the car's nice. Yeah, truck. Truck. I hear the truck is nice. Uh, uh, let, let's talk about like just off the top of our heads because the, the one thing that those cars all have in common is that they're not fun. <laughs> <laughs> right. So let's talk about cars that we would buy that are affordable and fun. And you can't say Miata because that's a, that's a cliche. But the one that I was just cliche, driving, uh, which cost $30,000, was the Honda Civic Turbo with yeah. the manual. And that car is fun, and it's fast, yes. and it's, you know, 30000 So we're into the threes now, but nevertheless, you know, if you can stretch your budget. Oh, I can, get, I can beat your number easily. All right, go for we it. We just had it, yeah. and I just did a video on it right before I hopped on the plane to come here. The Jetta. Yes. GLI. Yeah, no, no, not the GLI. That's well, no, the S. Oh, you had the S. Yes, with the tiny little turbocharged engine, it had a manual transmission. Yeah. And it's not exciting, like scintillating. It's not like the GLI. It's not like a GTI. It's not. You know, but for a car that gets outstanding gas mileage, like over 40 miles per gallon on the highway, decent manual transmission setup. The throws aren't too bad. And kind of a mushy clutch, and really grabby brakes, but. It handled really well, and it was zippy up in Colorado where how having much, a turbo helps. How, how much was it? Uh, Twenty-three thousand dollars. Yeah, so that's been around a while, right? The toolings are probably paid for at this point. Yeah, and 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 you know you're talking about a car, but the standard features are good. And it smells like a Volkswagen, which is good. <laughs> right, you get in there, I think there's that like Volkswagen smell. Yeah, and it looks fairly. Yeah, a little bit, even though I don't, it's not really a European build on that car. It reminds me like the Autobahn and... I think it's a screaming deal for a car that's not small. Vice beer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's uh, what I drink, Vice beer. That's what it reminds me of. Bitburger. And, I, I'm going to go with uh, Apfels off Scholler. I'm sure going. I'm going to go with uh, Dark Castle. <laughs> I don't know what Dark Castle is. Uh, no, that, no, look, um, it's. I, I really do think that that's a great bargain for I, 23. I agree. I agree. Um, the there, and there's a couple other ones that are in that zone as well. The Civic is absolutely a great car. The, you know, I was a little disappointed when we had that um, Honda or that Toyota Corolla hatch. Obviously, not the uh, Gazoo Racing one. Yeah. Um, and that not one, not the GR. No, but it was it was the hatch. It was sort of their entry level hatch, but one step above that, and it had the manual, and it just wasn't fast. No, yeah. and it didn't feel very sporty. But it was a perfectly good car. It was well put together, but no, nothing about it excited me. Um, now the cars that used to be affordable and fun, like the uh, uh, BRZ and the GR86, right? Uh, those like, are the new versions of those are also unobtainium, and they're selling over you, stickers. Yeah, you, you can't find them, and if you do find them, they're going to be way over sticker. Yeah. It's very difficult to find. So that that can't be on our list because they're not gettable. So we have to look at cars that are kind of sporty but aren't like you know the super. How much was Tommy's electric mini? Uh, back in the day, that was very affordable. It was the cheapest electric vehicle you could buy. I think it was with the last year at with, least. With the discount, you could yeah. get it for uh, twenty thousand. I think it was like twenty eight, and then you got seven and a half thousand dollars. That's off. provided that you could get that discount, and you're in the right state for that. So no, 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 it was federal, seven and a half federal, because they still have their tax credit. Yeah, but you still have to make it to a certain level to get. Oh, that of course, tax yeah, credit. income. Oh, yeah, for sure. I thought you meant state. Well, yeah. still, then, then there's the state one that you can get on top of that in some cases. Yeah, yeah. So yes. in Colorado, if you qualified, you could have got uh, at that point uh, nine thousand dollars off. So it would have been twenty-eight minus nine, nineteen thousand. Yeah, that's which, a really fun car. Yeah. yeah, but but once again, it's not money in your pocket. But that's a whole different uh, and podcast. I think, I think the base mini has gotten expensive too. If you just get the base, like it's, non John Cooper. It, it's less than thirty. I remember it that. Is. It's it's it, I it think it was be, twenty-seven. It I might think be, yeah, yeah that, that's what sounds right. But but that electric mini was a screaming bargain. If you were able to get it and get those and discounts, if, and if you can live with 114 miles around. that's the issue is the range. But that thing was super quick and super fun. It now, drove like a mini. Now we just had the Bolt at the office, and I got to drive that home one night. I think it's decent. It's okay, but the one we had was thirty-eight thousand dollars, and GM was out of tax credit, so thirty is what you're paying for it. Yes, but you are forgetting something, my friend. What's that? The regular Chevy Bolt 
comes with a discount provided that you sign off on a few things from General Motors and it'll give you up to $6,500 off on the car. It's not a discount that's going for taxes. This is in your pocket money and that's on TFLcar.com. You can read about it. Zach's covered it. Or AllTFL.com. Or AllTFLcar.com. All, all right. Well, there you have it, guys. Uh, electric cars we know are expensive. There's no real affordable ones right now. And gasoline cars, while they're less expensive, uh, the fun ones are also in the threes, not in the twos, for the most part. So for the most part, there's a couple ones. So tell me about your truck. Ah, uh, okay. And tell them what it is. Okay, guys, and, and we'll be doing some videos on this, I promise you. I promised everybody videos. They've asked for them. I bought a 2023 Hyundai Santa Cruz. Mm -hmm. And I got the SEL model. It's sitting in your driveway? It's in my, my wife had to pick it up from the, the... So I flew out here to go to uh, SEMA, right? Um, and then the day after SEMA, so we were only there for one day, Andre's still there. And we drove down to Anaheim and came to this thing. So as I'm leaving SEMA, my wife sends me a message saying, the dealership finally got your car. They want you to come back get it. Yeah. I'm sorry, honey, you got to get it for me. So I didn't even get to pick up my car from the dealership. I haven't purchased a new car for myself in 21 years. So I was kind of excited and it kind of took away from that. I had to wait almost four months to get it. And did you pay sticker, Nathan? Yes, That's exactly sticker. Yeah. So about 30 grand. Yeah, um, which is still, you know, for a truck, it's not bad, even though it's a mini truck. Did, I, you, did you consider the Maverick? Yes, I did. That would have probably been a longer way. It would have been, but a cheaper car, yeah. or a cheaper truck. Yeah. So what I did was, uh, I mean, this is the benefit of working at TFL, is that I actually was able to put them next to each other, and I had a Ridgeline at the same time. A whole of them were there, and I was able to jump in and out of each one of them and kind of figure out which one I'm most comfortable in and kind of thinking about what, what would work best. And even though the version of the Maverick that I was looking at versus the version of the Santa Cruz... There was about a $2,000 difference, and the Maverick would have been less expensive. I wasn't as comfortable in the seats. Uh -huh. the, the Maverick seats, for me, were a little harder, and just I wasn't able to get as comfortable. And I also didn't like the display. The display in the Maverick sort of angles in a weird way. I know this is nitpicking, guys, but this is a car that I'm going to be spending my money on. I'm going to have cheap skate, and I want to research the hell out of it. So as much as I loved the Maverick, and I still think it's a fantastic vehicle, I think that for me, and for what I needed to do, and for a car my wife is going to drive a lot, and she's driving it now, I thought that the um, Santa Cruz made a little bit more sense, and it was more comfortable for me. Yeah, and it's also built here, so that's cool. Yep, yep, yeah, 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 built come, in Alabama. Yeah, it doesn't come from, doesn't come from uh, Korea. Nope, nope. Uh, uh, and the other thing about the, the Santa Cruz, where some of you may be yelling at the uh, podcast uh, earbuds that you're wearing right now, don't you know that the dual clutch is oh, what we call? We not have, a problem. We have that one, but... You didn't buy the dual clutch. No, no. So one of the reasons I wanted the SCL, I could have, for a couple grand more, I could have gotten the turbo. And the turbo would have been great because I want extra power. But that dual clutch has always bothered me. And uh, we've gone off-road with them. We've cooked them before. And they're just not great in stop-and-go traffic. And Denver has a lot of stop-and-go yeah, traffic. Yeah, the Koreans are still doing dual clutches. Yeah. The Germans all went away from it. I don't understand it. Uh, it, it on it, performance cars, it makes sense. Yeah, if you're on a track, nothing better. Yes. But any other application, uh, I'm not too into it. So yeah. I, I started doing some research. I've driven a lot of vehicles. And I drove one of the um, regular ones. The S, actually, I drove an SE. And I realized, hey, it's got plenty of power. I mean, it's 192, I think, horsepower on the four-cylinder without the turbo. And it has the eight-speed automatic transmission, a proper automatic transmission. And that's been a transmission they've been using for years. It's been pretty solid, no major issues. The engine is pretty solid, no major issues. Um, so after doing all this research, I decided, you know what? I would rather go err on the side of caution. I'm not going to be towing much. Uh, there's a little trailer I'll probably be towing that weighs about 2,000 pounds, 2,500 pounds. The version I have tows up to 3,500 pounds, piece of cake. And you didn't get that 10 out cover either, right? That takes No, God, no. That's the thing is that if you get the SEL, which is what I got, yeah. if you get the activity package, yeah. it's $3,000 more. I think even more than that. And that gives you the tonneau cover, which has that extendable thing. And it gives you the roof rails. That's the only thing I regret not yeah. getting. I always have and a sunroof. I time pronouncing the tonneau cover. Tonneau, tonneau cover. cover yeah. That cover, which is a roll top style, takes it up, is. takes like a good foot of space. Exactly. So it, it's really good. You know, it's solid and you, it'll keep your stuff pretty dry and safe in there. But the other side of it is because it's a roll top, it takes up all of this space because it rolls into a container and you lose like a foot of space in what is slightly over a four foot bed. 
and you need every inch you're gonna get. Boy, story of people's lives. So I decided I didn't need it, I didn't want it. I, I also, it has the in-bed storage, kind of like the ridge line, but smaller. And I figured, okay, if I really need to lock something in a way that's important, if it can't go in the cab and if it's small, it can go in there. All right, so that's what I decided not to get that roll top thing. I didn't need the sunroof. I don't need the opening rear window because it's really the size of my fist. It, it's small. It's a tiny opening window. Um, and, and it's manual. Yeah, and, and I saved which myself is, over $3,000. Which is hard because if you're driving it by yourself, you can't open it really. Yeah. Good. You can't get around. Anyway, uh, well, congratulations, Nathan. Thanks. I, I got a tow package. It's the only option I got. What color? It is sage gray but it's sage is actually green so it is a green color that my son thinks looks like the mandalorian green oh that is true that's no not the color. mandalorian sorry boba fett oh. boba fett green yeah yeah it's cool it's a cool it, i like it i just and i think it looks kind of cool yeah, we'll do a full video on that oh we're gonna do a, well, i want to put them side by side the base model or almost the base model next to the one we have which is not quite top of the line it's kind of edging it though it's interesting that the differences between them all right guys well by the time you're listening to this, we hopefully would have driven all the way across country in a cannonball. We're at 317 miles, Nathan. That means we only have 200, 2,200 more to go. <laughs> when you said 200, I got excited. Hey, can I tell them one more thing yeah, before we close it. out? I know you. Uh, I said I would touch on a couple other things yeah. about upgrades and uh, people pushing. Uh, it took me about three weeks to find this car that I wanted to buy. Not, I mean, yeah, that, seems, it, that seems short for today's but the, crazy car. What do I do for a living? I know. I right. Know, yeah. And even that required three weeks for me to look. Yeah. And that. The, the reason I chose what I chose, and I want to give them a, a shout out because they, they didn't charge me over anything. Okay. And it wasn't because of me. Is Champ, uh, S H O M P, I think. In Denver. Yeah. yeah. Champ Hunt, Hyundai. And they have a whole bunch of, you know, they, they got Mini, they, they got all the other ones. Mini, yeah. But. They were absolutely square with me. They said, we're not gonna charge you more. Unfortunately, the order's gonna take a while. They were honest about that. They did not try to push me with anything, but they did offer some extra protection plans, which aren't needed in my case. But the bottom line is that I like the fact that I wasn't screwed over. And guess what? A lot of you guys are getting screwed over. So when you get a good story, when you hear, when you work with somebody who actually is square with you and doesn't overcharge you, let other people know. Let, help their business grow. Maybe it'll teach those other dealers, you know, hey, people can be honest and play about yeah. the rules. Hey, I know I have to, uh, like, hate to say this, but uh, if you're a dealer out there and you actually treat your customers with respect and with dignity, they actually may come back and buy another car from you next year or the year after. That's exactly it. Look down the road. Don't just look at your pocket immediately, which right. a lot of them are doing. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining us on this road trip across America. Uh, we are quickly approaching uh, Phoenix, Nathan, where yeah. we'll be doing our next charging stop. I hope so. We're down to 58 miles. Yes, we are. 27% of the battery pack. Uh, and as always, check out alltfl.com. Thank you to our patrons. Uh, you guys make these podcasts possible. Uh, and if you're confused while you're watching this on YouTube, uh, this is our podcast slash TFL talk channel. So that's why you're watching it. Yeah, from the road. I don't think this is something we're going to be doing very often. No, but <laughs> good thing we're not doing it 24 hours from now because I think it'd be a much yeah, different It's going to be rough. Yeah, we're, we're, we're driving this straight. Okay, guys, take care. Ciao. Well, I promised you something, and I'm going to give that to you. So for all of you guys watching this video, here is the time. You may not be able to see it, so I'm going to say it. It took us 46 hours and 46 minutes to drive from California nonstop except for charging all the way to Florida. Now we did that because we're trying to establish not only a record, because it's a really grueling, I'll make that grueling, test of an electric car, because what you're doing is taking the charging limit and of course the driving limit to the maximum, at least as far as you can, and then extrapolating how quickly you can drive across the country. So it tests the comfort of the car, it tests the quickness of its charging, it tests, well, the acuity of the drivers as well. <laughs> but we're proud to say that we've established this new 46 hour, 46 minute record. And if you guys wanna break it, it's out there. I'd highly recommend you do the same trip that we did. I know there's a traditional cannonball that runs from New York to Santa Monica in California, but we wanna do something different. We wanna do an electric cannonball that's 
not only family friendly, but it's really about charging and not about, you know, breaking the law. So thank you for listening and come back next week when we're back in the studio and probably still tired.